Well, good day, everybody. This is Chris with The Ancient Scholar, and today what I'd like to talk about is I'd just like to talk about some basic modeling for the diffusion of a, a, a medication or drug in, into the body. And, and we're just going to take some very basic um, models. And um, before I get too involved in this, I, I just want to make sure that we're okay on what, what, what really what it means when I, when I talk about a model. Um, when I'm modeling, uh, that's not to say that a model is necessarily absolutely right um, or absolutely wrong. Okay, uh, we often say that um, you know science or, or uh, some sort of theory is 100% proved this way or that way, and it's not necessarily right or wrong. It's just that uh, some models work in some circumstances and, 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 and they don't work in others and um, other models work in some circumstances and, but don't work in other circumstances. So when we talk about modeling um, we need to be very careful about what, what the context of the model is and um, if that model is actually going to work in the specific situation. Uh, there are you know very various models out there and these models um, uh, tend to be uh, what we call approximations of what's really going on because what's really going on is, is generally so incredibly complicated and intricate that it would be exceptionally difficult to take into account every kind of, uh, of a process that's occurring. So it's, it's better to, take, to do uh, approximation techniques and, and, get, and get a model that... Um, is a, a good facsimile of, of what's occurring and so that's what we're going to do today is we're going to use um, a, a fairly simple model based on the concept of passive diffusion. Okay so passive diffusion um, is what this model is going to entail and passive diffusion is just simply I have a, some sort of solute Okay, dissolved in a solvent. Uh, in biology, of course, that solvent is typically going to be water, and we know that um, diffusion is 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 simply through um, through random motion, through Brownian motion, um, uh, uh, the solvent is going to move uh, from areas of high concentration out to areas of low concentration and it's going to attempt to establish an equilibrium. That's just simple passive diffusion. And when we talk about passive diffusion of a medication, really what we're talking about is I have a medication um, that, or drug or toxin or what have you that's dissolved um, in a certain compartment um, of the body. So a certain compartment Right, a certain compartment, and um, I have a high concentration of that medication, xenobiotic, toxin, drug, whatever you want to call it, and it it has a, it will has a tendency um, to want to move into perhaps another compartment of the body where the concentration is lower. So I have a lower concentration. And it's simply going to move because there is a concentration gradient that has is, is been created uh, from higher to concentration to lower concentration. It is simply going to want to move through a, a passive diffusion process. Um, and in, in a lot of cases, uh, what we can say is that this, perhaps, this compartment here is the gastrointestinal compartment. And this compartment right here is uh, perhaps the vascular compartment. Okay, um, this this is a common situation that we run into is I, that I take a, a medication via the enteral route. Okay, the enteral route. It's given orally or um, by a nasogastric tube, or um, it, it, it enters the uh, the alimentary canal or the gastrointestinal tract. And that medication is then going to move through passive diffusion into the vascular system. Um, so we have a pretty good model, and we can model that that type of, of process through what's known as the Fick law of diffusion. The Fick 
law of diffusion. Okay. All right. And the Fick law of diffusion, uh, when we talk about uh, the movement, um, takes on this kind of um, form. So the rate of diffusion, which I'm going to call Q, okay, I'm going to call my, my rate of diffusion Q um, equals, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write this as a, as a basic differential equation, and that is dQ, okay, the differential or the infinitesimal, infinitesimal change in confusion, uh, diffusion, <laughs> excuse me, uh, with uh, it, it, over time, okay, dQ dt um, is going to equal uh, d a k, okay, d a k, uh, c one minus c two divided by h. All right. Well, this is a fairly basic equation, even though it may look kind of kind of funky. Um, so just remember that um, I have my numerator um, on the top here and my denominator on the bottom, and anything in the numerator is going to make this bigger. Okay, so any of this stuff gets bigger here, the rate is going to increase while h, whatever h is, if that gets bigger, then this will decrease. Okay, that's just a basic algebraic relationship. So let's go ahead and break these, these components down and talk about them. It's actually fairly easy once we get to talk about it. So D is just something called the diffusion, the diffusion constant, okay? Every substance has um, uh, its own constant. Um, A, okay, A is the surface area of the, of the membrane uh, that this Oops, A R E area. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and rewrite that there. Surface area, um, A R E A. Huh? Uh, the surface area of the membrane. If I have more surface area, then clearly I'm going to have uh, more surface area for diffusion to, to occur, and diffusion is going to in be increased. Um, K is something known as the partition coefficient or the newer terminology is the partition constant um, and that has to deal with how a substance partitions uh, you know is it partitioning into a fatty compartment or a, a, a water-filled um, compartment um, what have you uh, and then C1 C2 C1 minus C2 is just the concentration um, gradient. It is it is the difference in concentration. So if um, I have um, a setup like this, um, and I have this is the GI tract here, this is the vascular system here, um, and the more the, the the larger the difference in gradient in the gradient be, between here and here I have. Okay, so if I increase that gradient, it's more concentrated here, less concentrated here. Then, then clearly, um, this 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 difference in concentration is really nothing more than a driving pressure, if you will. It, it's going to be a it's sort of a driving pressure to drive uh, the diffusion of those substances um, across that membrane. Okay, so these are all things that increase the rate of diffusion, and then H. Is is simply the thickness of the membrane, okay? The the thickness of the membrane, and as H increases, diffusion is going to decrease, okay? So, uh, really, to summarize this, uh, when we're looking at the rate of diffusion, um, dQ dt, the rate of uh, diffusion uh, with respect to time. We could kind of simplify this and just say that um, you know increased diffusion constant is going to increase dQ dt. Uh, if I increase the surface area, okay, I have more area available for diffusion to occur. That's going to increase dQ uh, dt. Um, if I have an increased uh, partition coefficient um, or increase k that is also going to increase uh, dq dt. 
Um, and, and, and finally, if I increase my driving pressure, um, which is just my concentration gradient between uh, the, 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 the um, medication or drug in, in, in compartments, um, so C1 minus C2, the larger that, that gradient is, um, that, of course, is going to increase um, dQ dt. Now, likewise, if any of these were to decrease, so if D decreases, that would cause DQ, that would cause diffusion, the rate of diffusion to decrease. A decreases, that's going to cause it to decrease. Uh, K decreases, and my concentration gradient decreases, okay? Because the, the relationship on the numerator is a direct relationship to um, whatever you're looking at. Um, and likewise, uh, when we look at H, Okay, the thickness of a membrane um, as H, because there's a reciprocal relationship between the, uh, the uh, denominator and whatever we're looking at. So as H increases, um, that is going to cause dQ uh, dt to decrease. And then as um, H decreases, okay, the membrane um, becomes thinner. Of course, diffusion is going to be more efficient in dQ dt is uh, going to um, increase and, and that these are really the major players when we we look at a simple case of a simple passive diffusion of a substance um, across across a membrane um, we can use the thick principle of diffusion and that is just uh, dq dt just to recap equals the diffusion constant multiplied by the surface area of the membrane multiplied by the partition coefficient um, multiplied by the concentration gradient all of that divided by the thickness of the membrane Okay, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. As always, thanks for hanging in there.